Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Just My Two Cents. And today we're going to be talking about my experience of banking black. Now, I don't even know where to start this story off at. I think I'm going to start it at the beginning of last year when there was this huge surge of people encouraging folks to bank black, shop black, start black owned businesses, just everything black so that we can really just um, have community amongst ourselves and really help the black dollars that within our communities longer. And I was all for participating in this culture of banking black, shopping black and supporting black owned businesses. However, when I started to figure out what was around me and what was near me and convenient, it really wasn't working out. It really wasn't working out for me. And I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you um, because it wasn't working out and because it wasn't convenient. I wasn't going to inconvenience myself to drive an extra 15, 20 something miles to support somebody else when that's gas money. I'm just saying, just transparency, being honest. But anyway, so let's fast forward a couple months. I ended up last year winning an award. So for that award, um, the reception was at a black bank. I was like, oh my gosh, this is coming full circle. This is what I'm thinking to myself. This is coming full circle because I wanted to bank black. Bank black. <laughs> Say that five times. I wanted to bank black, but I didn't know that there was one conveniently located to where I was. Um, so with understanding that a bank that was black owned was near me, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I could kind of get into the groove or the mindset of opening up a bank account there and of course we have a reception at a bank or at some other type of venue that um doesn't normally have those type of events they're going to try to sell you um some of the services and some of the products that they offer so before the end of that night the bank manager or whoever he came up and he said well you know Stuff like this we're able to do because people like you support us. We're here to help elevate the black community and we want to make sure that we're helping you all be successful within the community and blah, 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 blah. And so then they went into some of the products and services that they offer, such as um, check, checking accounts, savings accounts, uh, loans for your personal use or loans for your business or financial counseling and all this other good stuff. And I'm like, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, I could definitely see myself, you know, opening up an account here. Now, it wouldn't be my real account, but it would be something where, you know, I could help, you know, the bank every now and again by putting money in, letting it sit there and all that good stuff. So I went home that night. I started to do some research about the possibility of the prospect of me opening up my bank account. Well, a bank account there. So. As I'm doing my research, I noticed that it's only two locations. And I'm like, okay, you know, they're small, black owned. That's fine. Cool. So as I'm starting to do more research into like these locations, I found out that one of the locations was downtown. And so where I'm located, downtown is pretty pretty much like a, a metro. So um, the buildings are located, you know, uh, neck to neck, side to side, you have street parking, can't find street parking, then you have to go inside the parking garages. And I was really hesitant because I'm like, if I'm going to a bank, I don't necessarily want to pay for parking, especially, you know, paying a dollar for parking and then getting charged by the hour if you park on the street or if you go to the parking garage, the parking garage start, starts at what, $6? Um, to park in the parking garage and I was like no I'm like I don't I said I don't know and so I was like well let me get out of this mindset of not wanting to pay for parking and then as I was doing more research about that branch um I found out that the first branch it is their main branch and that it's only open from nine to five Monday through Friday and they have an ATM and you have to get out of your car to walk inside to the ATM and then walk back and that ATM is located in like the lobby area. So they have like two different doors. They have like a security door and then they have like the regular door. Um, and so when they're closed, you can still have access to the ATM, just won't have access to the main lobby. Uh, but I was sitting here like, yeah, that's not safe. If I need to go to the bank to get $20 right quick and 
you know, it's like eight o'clock at night or seven o'clock at night and it's getting dark early, that's not a safe type of environment that I want to be in. I have to get out of my car to go inside to the ATM, then have to walk back to my car and you never know if somebody's watching you. And then I was also still stuck on the fact that I have to pay for parking. So either have to pay for parking on the street if I can find a park, because if you know anything about a downtown area, street parking is hard to come by. If you don't get a park by 8.30, then you can really wrap it up. And then sometimes you have to circle the park, you know, the street parking at least 10 times just for you to get a park on the street. And you better hope that somebody else hasn't been um, telling you to try to figure out, <laughs> you know, where to park as well. Then if you go inside the parking garage, as I stated, it starts at $6. And then from there, here, depending on which parking garage you park in, uh, sometimes it charges by um, the half hour or by the hour. So that whole trip, well, if you went there, let's say to get $20 out of your account, you might as well say that's a $30 trip if you park in a parking garage or a $25 trip if you can find street parking. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not going to work for me. Let me see what their other um, bank look like, the other branch of the bank look like. So I researched that and then I found out that their other branch was only an ATM. I said, yeah, this is not going to work. And it was across town. I was like, yeah, I said, this is not going to work. So I kind of just left the idea where it was, where I left it back in the earlier part of last year because I said, it's not going to work for me. Like it's too much of an inconvenience for me to get out of my car and to go walk in or to try to find a park when I can just go to a mainstream bank or what is commonly known as a white bank, park anywhere, go inside, come back out to my car and I have an issue getting a park and I having to worry about long lines. And a lot of times these mainstream banks are open on the weekend now or they're open later. So I don't have to rush on work. And then you know, I don't have to worry about them rushing my transaction because they're open later hours or hours on the weekend. So I'm like, okay, you know, I won't be able to support them, but I will definitely spread the word about their bank. So let's fast forward a couple months from that occasion. So I've been telling other people in the community about the bank. As I was telling other people in the community about the bank, I noticed that I kind of started to forget about it a little bit because you know things in life come up and you start to forget about things and so one of the things in life that came up was the fact that one of my businesses it needed capital it needed capital because uh you know businesses they just need capital right so as i was looking for different ways for minorities to get capital for their small businesses i was like oh my gosh like i don't even know where to start and that's a whole nother video right there so I decided to go with um, a small what, what, small business administration or something like that. Y'all know, I think it's a small business administration, an SBA loan. I decided to go with the SBA loan because all these other predatory loans and stuff that I saw online, they weren't necessarily what I needed. I just needed a small business loan um, just to help me kind of get to where I need to go for that business. And when I filled out the small business um, administration, application and stuff. I didn't get any hit backs from some of the mainstream of the white banks. And that's a whole nother story. I can link some links below that talks about some of that, some of those issues for people of color, specifically black people going through that process. I'm not here to talk about it right now. I'm just here to talk about my experience with banking black. So like I said, I didn't hear anything else from any of the mainstream banks or any of the white banks. Just put it out there. Just be blunt. I didn't hear anything from them. And so as I was going through the process of trying to figure out how can my business get this capital, my sister was like, yo, what about that bank you went to um, for your reception? They're black owned and they said that they really understand the needs of black people, especially black businesses and how the two of y'all can work together to uplift the community. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. So I ended up reaching out to them. And I thought it was going to be a couple days before they got back to me, but really they got back. I want to say she called me back two hours after I put in my inquiry. 
And then she did the screening interview on the phone and she said, oh my gosh, you seem like somebody we would definitely like to work with. I'm gonna go ahead and send you over the paperwork. So she sent over the paperwork. I filled everything out. I told her that I would get it back to her as soon as possible. And I had to start pulling documents and all this other good stuff. And I think within like two or three days, I was able to get um, the application back to her. So then she called me and she was going over the stuff while I was on the phone. And she said, everything looks good. I said, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm super excited at this point because I'm like, okay, we about to make this deal, about to get this capital. I'm finally able to support them. Like, this is really about to work out. Well, this is when I found out a little bit more about black banks that people don't tell you on the front end. The first thing that they don't tell you is that even though it's a black bank, um, sometimes they have white people running it. So one thing that I found out through this process is that even though it's entitled as a black bank, the person who like runs the bank, or I'm not sure what you call that person, but he's a white person. Not saying it's anything wrong with that. Not saying that it's anything, um, I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. What I'm saying about it is that if I'm thinking this is a black business, a black corporation, a black bank, every, all the tellers are black, all the people working in, in the back is black then why would the person who has like the most say or the person who has like the most clout or the person who is the most powerful person in the organization, why are they white? Why aren't they black? And that was just a question I had. Maybe if you have a question, not a question, if you have an answer, you can drop them below. I just want to know. But that's what I found out. Um, the second thing that I found out through um, this process, um, you know, after, you know, we were on the phone and she was talking to me. And this is the thing that kind of stuck out from that conversation the most is that not only does it take 90 days, but in which I already knew because it says that on multiple web pages when you are applying for an SBA loan, but not only does it take 90 days, but they don't in-house their loans. So how can I explain this? They don't in-house their loans. So that black bank, that specific one they have to um they they have like a third party lender and so that third party lender um essentially funds their loans and so it's like it's me it's a black bank and it's a third party lender i turn my stuff into the black bank the black bank looks over it then they turn my application over to the lender the white lender um because it was a white bank and that's why I'm saying the white lender. They looked over the application and then they made a decision and then they told the black bank, then the black bank told me. And I was kind of perplexed about all of this because of the simple fact that when, you know, I'm doing business, for instance, like I've done business in the past with Wells Fargo um, for me to be able to go to college. And so it was me and Wells Fargo. It wasn't me, Wells Fargo, and another lender. It was me and Wells Fargo. Shout out to Wells Fargo. <laughs> But anyway, it was me and Wells Fargo. We went, we did business together so that I was able to go to school and get my um, undergraduate degree. So I was perplexed as to why when I was going through this, why it had to be me, this bank, and a third party bank that happened to be a white bank. I'm like, what, you know, where, where does all this come into the mix of you know, us having to have third party people. And what I found out through some other research is that most, I'm not gonna say most black banks, but some black banks don't have the capital to fund everything in-house, so they have to get third party people. And that's really unfortunate because even though that black bank might understand, the people who are making those decisions within that structure understands a lot of the things that black people go through, especially black business owners and all that good stuff, even though they understand that, they are still dependent upon a third party lender that might come from a mindset of like, well, they don't understand the black plight. So they're making decisions, not necessarily on black and white and all this other stuff, but they're making decisions based on what are mainstream decisions, if, if that makes sense. I don't know. But in my mind, it makes sense. Maybe if I need to articulate it a little bit better, just let me know down in the comment section. But I'm like, you know, I was kind of, I think I was kind of fooled in a sense when I started this process because I'm like, even though 
I was looking for somebody to kind of fund or sponsor my SBA loan. Um, at the same time, I was thinking I was just going to be working with me and the bank and the government, not me, the bank, this lender, and then the government. Because with an SBA loan, it comes from the government anyway. So I'm thinking that it's just going to be us. But at the same time, it's like we got this third party lender um, who, before it even gets to the government level, who's making a decision, coming through with my application and all this other stuff. And so what I think the point that really got me with this whole process of Bank and Black was that my communication, my initial communication was was with me and the Black Bank. Halfway through the whole process, it stopped and it was me and the third party lender. Me and that bank, we communicated pretty much on, if not a day-to-day -day basis, a weekly basis with updates and things I need to turn in or things they wanted me to revise and then turn back in. They were giving me updates on where we were in the process and all this other stuff. And I was like, wait, I'm like, what happened to the people that I initially started with? Because when I kind of took some time to reflect, I'm like, I really want to do bank business with um, me and this black bank I, between us two. And then I knew the government would have to come in because it's an FBA loan. However, I didn't think there was going to be me, black bank, white bank, white lender, whoever, and then the government. It, it was just a lot going on in regards to this. And so once a final decision had been made about stuff, um, decided not to, you know, go through everything because communication, once they gave the bank the decision, communication just went blank. Like I didn't hear from anybody for like almost a month and a half. And I was like, I don't, I don't need that type of energy. You know, like at the beginning, you know, we're communicating pretty good. And then once they give you a decision, I don't hear anything from you. I got to reach out to you. I'm sending you emails. Um, um, I'm, you know, I'm calling and I'm trying to get in contact and it's just ghosts. Ghost, and I was like, Yeah, I just personally, I can't really do business like that. I need whoever I'm talking to, to especially in regards to money and stuff like that, like for you to have this open floor of communication and stuff. So, once you know the decision was made, decided not to move forward and stuff like that because of me just. I don't know, just having some thoughts about how things should go um, in regards to that. And people might be saying right now, well, why will your business need a capital and your business capital should be more important than that? And I'm like, yeah, at the same time, it wasn't that, that important for me to sit here and kind of get a whole holistic picture of what would be going on for the next couple of years. I'm like, yeah, no. So anyway, when it goes, she called me, she's like, hey, well, you can pick up your refund um, because you have to pay like some earnest money up front. And she's like, hey, you can pick up your refund. And so I went to the bank and th this goes back, this is very important because this goes back to that part when I was doing that research about them being open from nine to five. So I left my job at 430 on a Friday to go pick up the check because she called, um, she called that Friday afternoon and I was able to leave my job at 4 30. Any other time I would be able to go to a bank that had a parking lot, drive in right quick, run in, get what I need to do, handle my business and leave. This time because it was located downtown, I had to leave work. I legit went, went around the block and up the block and down the block and, and all this other stuff pertaining to parking a couple times. And I said, I'm not going to park in a parking garage, pay $6 because I'm only going to be in there probably 10 minutes or less, 15 minutes or less max. So about time I find a park, it's four fifty. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's four fifty. So I rush pay parking really quick and, um, I walk as fast as I can to the branch. I get there to like the door, like the corner where the door is located at like 4.52, 4.53. I see the bank teller walking out. I see the bank teller walking out. And 
I'm not trying to compare, you know, apples to oranges and all this other stuff. But I'm saying this. I have been in situations where at these banks, where at these mainstream banks, where they don't close the door until 5 o'clock. And sometimes they don't close the door until after 5 o'clock because they know that people are still coming in. These people close the door at if, if I met her at the corner at 552, 553, she had to close the door at about 445-ish. And she was hot-tailing it to her car. I don't blame her. It's a Friday. You know, it was around Christmas time. You want to get to where you need to get to. I don't blame you. But at the same time, it's like, have somebody else in there who can work till 5 o'clock because that was a huge inconvenience. And so the lady who called me and told me that my refund, if I didn't pick it up, that um, if I didn't pick it up that day, that Monday when she got to the office, she would send it to me. Tell me why it was the middle of January and I'm sitting here waiting for my refund to come in the mail. And I'm emailing these people, I don't hear nothing. And you know, I think I had called, I don't hear nothing. I'm sitting here like, yo, I'm calling, communicating, I don't hear nothing about my refund. Y'all told me a month ago that if I didn't pick it up, y'all was going to call me. So, I mean, you was going to put it in the mail so that I could have it. I don't, I don't hear not one thing. So, I ended up emailing her a time and a day that I was going to be there to come pick it up. I got to... I'm starting to, I don't know why I'm talking like this now. But anyway, I got there to the bank at 9 o'clock. I text my supervisor, I told her, hey, um, I'm gonna be a little late because I need to go by the bank. And she was cool with it because the night before I had worked late. So she's like, that's fine. So I'm there, nine o'clock, ready to go in. I get out, and well, and I'm not gonna sit here in front. I did wait in the car 10 minutes because I know, I know my people. I know my people, I know sometimes, not all of us are punctual. So I waited in the car for 10 minutes. And then I went to the um, door, pulled on the door, the door was locked. Then I'm like, well, this is a bank. More people besides myself are going to be coming in and out of the bank. I'm sitting in my car waiting for other people to go in and out. I don't see nobody go in and out of that bank. I'm at this point looking through the glass. Cause like I told you at the beginning of the story, I think I did, <laughs> uh, the doors and stuff. They're like glass, so you can see in and out the bank. All the windows and stuff were, were glass. So, I mean, really pretty place. So, I'm trying to see if I see people at the front. I don't see no tellers and stuff at the front. I'm trying to look to the side. All of this from like trying to peer in through the door. I'm trying to look to the side to see what, see do I see any people in the office. I don't think I really saw no people in the office. So, I get on my cell phone. I call them. I'm like, hey. Uh, and then at this point, I went back to my car because, you know, I'm pulling on the door. People looking at me. I'm looking at them. I'm like, I don't want nobody to call the police. Even though I was dressed up and I know, you know, that's a whole nother conversation about who looks like what and all this other stuff. But I'm like, you can see I'm going in there to conduct business or whatever. So it ain't, it's, it's nothing like that. So I get back in my car. I pull up their number. Well, first off, I pulled up to see what time they open. And then I'm like, well, are they open today? And then it said yes. So I call them. The phone rings and rings and rings and rings. Then this person, they pull up talking about some, huh? What? I can't hear you. Say it again? Okay, hold on. And then they just hang up. And it's like, okay, bye. And then they hang up. No professionalism. None at all. I'm like, it's, it's like this person, it's like he was answering his personal cell phone or his personal home phone. And I said, I can't. I cannot. So I go to the door because he's like, okay, hold on. And then he hung up, you know, after we did all this other stuff like he's like, okay, bye. Um, I got out of my car, I waited like two or three minutes, maybe five minutes, got out of my car, walked up to the front, and I just stood there at the door. I'm thinking he's about to come open the door. I, I I'm just standing there, it's cold, looking in, people looking at me like she done been to that door before. And I'm like, yeah, I have been to this door before. And so eventually the lady comes up after five minutes. And I even think, I think I, I went into the lobby area where the ATM is located. And 
she handed me whatever. But the thing is, it's like my name, it can be said in two ways. It can be like the short version, where it can be like the regular version or the abbreviated version. And she put the abbreviated version with my last name. I'm like, I have never given this person permission to call me the abbreviated version of my name. But she gonna put that on there. And not only did she put it on there, she gonna put my last name and she just wrote it on there. It's not even no uh no label or nothing on there. It's not even no type of professionalism. It's just like she just printed it out real quick, wrote my name on the envelope, and stuck it in there. Stuck it in there. And just to kind of put um, a cherry on top of this whole story is that um, I ended up um, purchasing a house and because of the way that the bank wrote the refund because you, if you know anything about buying a house they comb through every last piece of your finances and this is the one where it came back and bit me in the butt it almost prevented me from like closing on my house simply because of how this bank wrote the refund check. And it said, and because the lady who was um, being, you know, doing like um, the underwriting and stuff, whoever was doing underwriting, they kept saying, well, it seems like she had a personal loan from this bank. I'm like, no, I did not get a personal loan from this bank. I did not. Like, this was a refund. This was a refund. And I kept telling them, like, I decided. And I gave them like my whole little explanation of what, what happened and how I got the refund from them. And it was like, well, because of how it's written, it's, it's written as if it was um, a, a loan that they gave you. I'm like, look, first off, if I was going to get a loan, it wasn't going to be from all that amount, which was the refund or whatever. Second off, I'm like, you know, I'm giving you as best story as I can, but then it goes back to me being like an undergrad and remember getting refund checks from Wells Fargo um, or from like my uh, institution and how they would write, you know, uh, my name, the amount, and in the memo line, they would say what it was for. And they would say um, tuition, and books or whatever refund or whatever they would say I don't know it's been a long time but you know it I don't know I don't even know how to end the story but this is just my experience of banking black if you don't get anything else from it um do your research do your research to find out who's over it do your research to find out um the capital of it because as I found out when I was like pretty much knee deep into the process is that the bank, even though it's really cool, sometimes they don't have the capital to really fund what you need. And do you really want to be in a bank like that? Do you really want to put all your money into a bank that might not have the capital to stay open or to stay thriving um, because of whatever? Also, not only um, do your research uh, understand the capital of the bank, but see the professionalism of it. Because as I said, towards the end of the story, it almost cost me closing on the house simply because of the lack of professionalism um, that they began to exhibit and stuff like that. So with all that being said, comment below about how you feel about the story. If you have any examples about um, Banking Black or um, anything like that, I do want to put this disclaimer out there that I'm not saying that I wouldn't do it again. I'm just, I just wouldn't do it again with this bank. And I will also say that I'll do a little bit more research next time about who I'm dealing with. And if I can just give any piece of advice, do not do anything based solely based on color. You know, simply because you might have a white person and a black person offering the same product. And sometimes, you know, the white person product, you might want to buy that product because it fits a little bit more with your budget and the customer service might be better. And sometimes you might want to pay a little bit more if you go to a black business because, you know, with the whole thing about sometimes you go to a black, you know, place and stuff be extra and all this other stuff. But it's because of overhead and the connections and stuff that they might not have that a white business does. So it really just depends. It really just depends. So, yeah, like I said. Um, let me know below, like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.